thanks very much for spending a few minutes uh, with this vaccine update. We want to go through a few things over the next few minutes. One, we want to talk about what we've done in the past. Uh, and then two, we want to talk about who has received the vaccine. And importantly, three, we want to talk about what we're going to do in the future to try and get more vaccine out to more people. So first, let me talk about what we've done in the, in, in the past. Since the middle of December, we've had some access to the vaccines, uh, still in very, very short supply. But let me give you, give you some of the numbers that we've, uh, we've uh, compiled so far. So total doses that Riverside has received from the health department. And it's the health department that distributes the vaccine. Uh, we don't get the vaccine directly. So total doses that Riverside has received so far is 54,150 total. Now, of that, about 17,000 have been Moderna, and then, forgive the doctor's handwriting now, and then the, uh, another uh, 37,000 have been Pfizer. And we have the ability to store ultra-cold storage that the Pfizer vaccine requires, so that's, that, that's been a real plus for, uh, for the people in this region because we have the ability to receive the Pfizer vaccine. Um, total redistributed, and by redistributed, I mean, I mean that we take receipt of the vaccine for someone else and then give it out to them. So for example, that might include private medical groups. So we've given vaccine, for example, to some of the private medical groups in and around the Walter Reed Gloucester area. They've done a great job of planning, right? We've given some doses of vaccine to uh, Bayview physicians. They've done a tremendous job about planning and they've registered with the CDC done a great job. The health department won't give vaccine to people and medical groups that, that haven't developed an in-depth plan and registered with the CDC. But we've given a fair amount out to, uh, to, uh, to private medical groups. Um, we've given uh, some special events with the health department at Christopher Newport University for essential workers in the cities and the towns. And then certainly we've, we, we've um, had some very significant events for other types of essential workers, teachers for example, on the Eastern Shore uh, last weekend, we vaccinated 800 teachers in one day. So anyway, the total the number of doses here that's been redistributed is 20,780. Um, that leaves the total shots given by Riverside, most of these are first dose, 31,619 31, total doses that Riverside has given. Then you might ask, well, what's the breakdown of those people that have gotten the vaccine? So about 6,000 or so have been employees of Riverside, <clears throat> nurses, doctors, frontline people like that. And about 3,000 of them have been other healthcare workers, private medical group practices, for example, uh, small groups, larger groups, um, their own staff, about 3,000 or so there, which leaves about 22,000 619 as of yesterday to be exact that we've given the, the vaccine to who are patients and so we think that's a great great accomplishment um, now importantly and some special thanks should be given there was a, a particular um, a particular uh, opportunity last week where the state um, discovered that they had an overage an excess of about 60,000 vaccines uh, doses from the long-term care effort with CVS and Walgreens vaccinating nursing home patients. So they had another 60,000 doses. Uh, so they said to health systems that have done well, we've done reasonably well, is how would you distribute this? Could you give them out in a week? So of that 60,000, Riverside said, we think we can give out 8,600 um, within a week. And so we gave out an extra 8,600 predominantly to, to patients over the course of last week out of that 60,000. So that was a real plus for people uh, in this area and it was great work by the people in the medical group. It was unbelievable people volunteering in the community. It was a tremendous effort. So anyway, all of that comes to a grand total of 52,399 that we've actually given out, which when you take it and you divide it by the total amount there, means that we've utilized 97% of the vaccine that we've been given, 97%. There aren't a lot of states and health systems that can say that. We think that's been a very, 
uh, efficient uh, process here. And you read sometimes about waste, uh, health systems or hospitals that at the end of the day waste vaccine. So the question is how much have we uh, wasted? And the answer is out of 54,000 doses, a total of 14 doses or 0.0002%. Um, and all those 14 doses occurred on the first day as that we were gaining experience with reconstituting uh, the, uh, the vaccine. Um, so the next thing that uh, we wanted to talk about was um, who has gotten the vaccine. So as we look at who has received the vaccine, there are a few important things um, that, that we want to talk about. The first is men versus women, and more women have received the vaccine than men. Now, to some, to some extent, that's because uh, of healthcare workers being the focus of the initial uh, phases of the, of the vaccine, and so about 60 plus percent have been women, and um, a majority of healthcare workers are women, uh, and about 37 uh, percent or so men. Well, we need to focus on this going forward because men are actually at greater risk of dying from COVID uh, than women by a little bit. Um, in terms of age, uh, you'll see this is the, the we tried to focus on um, people who are older, over age 65 or 75. The younger age groups were largely healthcare workers, frontline healthcare workers. And then the very important question of race. When you look at the race of people who have received the vaccine, 70% were Caucasian and 30% uh, we're uh, members of other groups, either African Americans or Latinos. We need to work harder as a, as a country, really, on improving this because there's some important things about COVID as it affects uh, uh, particularly African American and Latino populations. So this is data now from the CDC, uh, recent data. And if you look at cases, hospitalizations, and deaths amongst African American and Latino people and compare them to Caucasian people, this is the data. Um, African American people are 1.4 times more likely to get COVID, 3.7 times more likely to be hospitalized for COVID, and 2.8 times more likely to die of COVID. Latino uh, people, about 1.7 times more cases, 4.1 times uh, the hospitalizations, and likewise, 2.8 times the deaths. Now, people are not completely certain why this is. It may be because uh, people in, in, in these groups don't have the right access to health care. It may be that their medical conditions aren't treated as adequately as Caucasian people. It may be because of the hospitals that surround them. And this is national data. Um, but in any case, uh, it's a problem. And so it's one, thing, one reason why we really need to encourage the uptake of the vaccine in African American and Latino people, and we have some plans for that working with the health department going forward. So now the question is, um, who else can we help get the vaccine? Let me just describe what we've done so far. So beginning before Christmas, um, hospitals and health systems and people across the country started to get the vaccine for healthcare workers, and that began about the middle of December. Uh, same time, CVS, Walgreens, and um, other providers started to vaccinate nursing home patients also in the middle of December. Um, about three weeks ago, Riverside started to vaccinate its older population within its primary care panels, the people that are at tremendous risk of, of, of bad outcomes, hospitalizations, and deaths from COVID. Uh, and that began about three weeks ago. We, um, about two weeks ago, started to vaccinate the over 65 uh, patients within our primary care panels, likewise at much greater risk of death than, than somebody younger. Um, and then starting this Wednesday, 10 February, we're going to open up the uh, ability to schedule for vaccine appointments for anybody over age 65 that has seen a Riverside provider over the course of the last year, from 1 January 2020 onward. Um, and that will begin this Wednesday, the ability to schedule uh, an appointment. Now, one of the problems that, that has to be understood is that supply is going to tremendously limit access to these, uh, the, these appointments. So just let me give you an example. If you took this group, this group, and this group here, we think right now, when you add those people up, that's 80,000 people 
total. All right. So let's say that 70% of the people want to get the uh, want to get the vaccine. Right. All right. That ends up being I'm going to do my math right. 56,000 people. All right. Herbicides getting receiving approximately 2,000 doses per week. 2,000 doses per week. So the state is receiving 105,000 doses. That might go up a little bit. But we're getting 2,000 doses a week. And that's not guaranteed necessarily going forward. It depends upon supply. Um, at that rate, just to get 56,000 people vaccinated, that will take about seven months. Now, supply may increase, and so we may end up with more than 2,000. The state may end up with more than 105,000. But the truth is, it's going to take a while to get people vaccinated. So we have a slide that gives an estimate of where we think we will be. And it's just an estimate going forward in terms of groups. And you can see that it really stretches well into the summer. So I agree with what President Biden said last night in the interview we did before the Super Bowl, that it's going to be very difficult to get a majority of the people vaccinated before the fall. I think that's very true. And it's important that even though these appointments are opened up, we've still got a significant shortfall in supply. And so um, we ask for your patience in this. And now let me just discuss sort of the process for scheduling the vaccine. So what will be the process that people can use to try and schedule an appointment at Riverside for the COVID vaccine? So we envision a three-tiered process. One is using MyChart, and people who are eligible who have been seen at Riverside over the last year will get a ticket to schedule a vaccine appointment in MyChart. Um, we, we've scheduled about half the uh, appointments so far by MyChart, and it's very helpful because it prevents the call lines from being overwhelmed. So that's, that's one option. In addition to that, all Riverside practices, medical practices, both primary care and specialty, will have the ability to schedule uh, the vaccine uh, appointments, uh, depending upon supply. And then three, we plan to work with the health department um, and uh, form outreach teams to um, reach out to particularly vulnerable populations and particularly um, underserved uh, areas of the region to try and improve the vaccination rates among very vulnerable uh, populations, who, as I said before, are at even greater risk of dying and complications from COVID. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, starting uh, on, uh, on Wednesday. Um, again, it, it really is a matter of supply, and um, we do get 2,000 doses a week at best, and that's not necessarily guaranteed. Um, we do hope that the vaccine supply increases, and let, just, let me just spend uh, the last minute or so telling you about what we think is going to happen in terms of vaccine supply, at least what we're hearing. Okay, so the numbers I just talked about in terms of supply and demand don't sound um, terribly encouraging, but let me try and end by giving you some hope in terms of new production to come. First, let's take a look nationally across the United States what the vaccine supply so far is, right? So Pfizer and Moderna, okay, both two-shot vaccines, so far, they, uh, they have delivered 60 million doses uh, to, the, uh, to the U.S. government. Increasingly, that is getting to the states, but 60 million so far. All right? They have promised by April, and they think they'll be on track by April, to deliver another 140 million uh, doses by April, which is, which is really great. So more than twice what's been delivered so far. Now, the government, just uh, the, in the last few days, has uh, is talking to both uh, companies about buying and purchasing and then producing additional vaccine uh, for the United States. And that number now is estimated to be about 200 million. But again, you put a question mark because that's just an estimate right now. But still, significant amounts of Pfizer and Moderna vaccine uh, that, are, that are coming. Now also, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine has been, uh, now has an emergency, youth, uh, emergency use authorization uh, in front of the uh, FDA, which should be approved in the next two weeks or so. It's taken an awful long time to approve it, but let's say it's two weeks, right? So by two weeks, and it's estimated that by July, all right, they will have another 100 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So that adds up, that really adds up, and that's a one-shot vaccine. Um, and you may have heard, well, is it is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine uh, uh, somewhat less effective than the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines? And the answer is no one really knows because 
the trial that was done with Johnson & Johnson was done in South Africa, and that's a more resistant uh, form of the virus. But even against that form of the virus, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was still incredibly effective at preventing serious illness and hospitalizations. So really good, great vaccine at only one dose and easier to store than the Pfizer vaccine. It doesn't require that ultra cold storage. So when you look at these numbers, these are numbers I think that give people a lot of hope for the future. Um, and what we've tried to do over the course of the last six weeks or so since we've been giving vaccine is to, to make supply the only problem, to make certain that distribution isn't the problem. I think starting early on in the early days, I think that states, uh, including Virginia, had a bit of a problem with distributing the vaccine. Those problems, at least here at Riverside, we don't have those problems. So we're completely supply dependent. We can give 10,000, 12,000 doses of vaccine uh, each week as long as we have the supply. So, so we, we do have a lot of hope that things improve, um, but I do think realistically it will be well into the summer before we start to see a majority of the, of the population uh, having received the vaccine. Uh, we do think it's good news. Uh, we're going to do everything we can. We want to vaccinate everyone possible, and um, if there are questions, the website has all the contact information, and um, we thank you for your patience, and we'll be back uh, in touch with you on a regular basis to update you on, on your progress and our progress. Thank you very much.